Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Olivia and I am currently living in Mexico. I have been living in Mexico a little bit over a year, traveling and living around Mexico, mostly in the state of Oaxaca. I have been in Oaxaca for the past year. I spent about six months living in Oaxaca City and now I'm currently on the coast of Oaxaca. This vlog, I wanted to share a complete guide on Oaxaca City mostly, but also just the state of Oaxaca. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to just share some tips and some tricks, some things to know before visiting Oaxaca. I get so many questions about where to stay in Oaxaca, what neighborhoods to stay, how long should you stay, what should I pack, how do I find a long-term place, and so many questions I get. And so I thought I would create a video that could be a one-stop shop for all of those questions for you. Of course, if you have any more questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below and I will try my best to answer those for you. I absolutely love Oaxaca City and think it's a great place for anyone to travel to and if you have the opportunity to stay long term to really get a taste of Oaxaca and the culture there, I would totally recommend it. Oaxaca is just a beautiful, beautiful place and I can go on and on about city in general but the state as well um, and there's just so much still that I haven't seen. So in this video I just want to break down all of the questions that I've been asked and some things I think maybe you should know beforehand. I really hope I can get this video done because my camera looks like it might die uh, in, in like 30%. First thing, I think there's a lot of confusion on how you pronounce Oaxaca. So Oaxaca is Oaxaca, not Oaxaca, not Oaxaca, none of that. Uh, so Oaxaca. How long should you stay in Oaxaca? I would recommend about three to four days at least. I definitely think you could stay longer. You can stay shorter, but in order to get a real good feel for the city, I believe that you should stay at least three to four days to kind of be able to experience it and potentially make your way outside of the main centro. Maybe check out Monte Alban, Itla. There's so many places outside of the city that are just so beautiful. You can stay longer and try to check out the surrounding areas as well. Best time to visit. I have been in Oaxaca in the dry season and I also visited Oaxaca in the wet season. If I'm being honest, I think both times are spectacular, both wet and dry season. I think in the rainy season, it only rains in the second half of the day, so you really do have all morning and it honestly gives you a break from the heat in Oaxaca and it also just makes everything a little bit more lush and green and just brings a little bit more life. If you do go in the dry season, things are dried up um, and you won't experience the green and the lush that Oaxaca has to offer. I like both. I really do think there's something special about the wet season because one less people are there and you just get to experience more green and lush. If you visit Monte Alban in the dry and wet season, there's just a complete difference in the way that it looks and the way that it feels. I was so surprised because the first time I went was dry season and then I went again in wet season, but I don't think you will miss out on anything if you choose one or the other. I think they're both beautiful. You might be a little more hot in dry season. The weather, like I said, there's wet and dry season, but overall the temperatures are pretty moderate. There are days where it gets extremely hot in the day you are, keep in mind, in a valley. All the heat is kind of trapped in there and it can be just dry in general. The days are going to be hot and at evening it's going to be a little bit cooler. In the mornings it's going to be a little bit cooler, but overall it's like in the 80s, uh, sometimes 90s in the daytime. How to get there. You can fly directly into Oaxaca City. There is an airport just about 20 minutes outside of Centro. If you want to get into Centro from the airport, there are collectivos that you can take totally safe, very affordable, or you can take a cab as well. We usually just take the collectivo and give them our address. They drop us right off and yeah, it's just really nice, affordable, and a great option. It's very easy. It's a small airport. There's a taxi stand in the airport just outside of baggage claim. It'll a taxi and there's usually a line. It's very, very simple. So don't think too much about that because I think too many people are like, how do I get from the airport to my place? Another way you can go to another part of Mexico and take a bus into Oaxaca City. We did that. You can also take buses from wherever else in Oaxaca City. Mexico is one of the best places for transportation and they make things very easy for you. 
things to do. There are so many things to do around Oaxaca City. The first thing I would recommend is just walking around and experiencing and soaking in the culture. Oaxaca City is just so beautiful. I'm just having flashbacks right now to the square and uh, the feeling of being in Oaxaca City. It's just gorgeous and it's a photo everywhere you go. So first of all, I would just recommend just taking a walk by yourself, taking a walk with your loved ones, whatever, but even take a walk by yourself and just take it in. Uh, that's like number one. There's so much to eat. There's so much to experience just sitting on the street. You'll just experience Oaxaca and the Oaxaca culture. There's going to be parades everywhere. There's always something going on. There's weddings in the street. There's festivals. I mean, never ever miss out on anything. It's just an experience overall. So I would do that. You can also go to Yerba El Agua. It's the beautiful petrified waterfall. <laughs> it's absolutely stunning. It's really nice to get near water when you're in Oaxaca City because it's it is so dry there so it's a nice little break and you drive up into the mountains leave some tours that I would recommend below but that's a beautiful place and you can spend all day there if you want I absolutely loved it it's stunning as well Monte Alba one of my top favorite places um, to experience Oaxaca obviously the history there it's gorgeous it's such a spiritual experience get a feel for how it was thousands of years ago and there's a nice cafe there as well that you can have breakfast I totally recommend that and it overlooks Monte Alban. The food's really good. It's just a really nice experience. We do that every time we go there. Tickets there are very affordable. You can get a taxi. Usually what we do, walk to Centro, get a taxi up, and we usually find a taxi back down. Etla, Mitla, all the little towns surrounding. There's a big market. I'll put it right here. And it's the largest market in Mexico. Yes, yeah, there's just so much to do. Visit the markets in Oaxaca City. Eat the food in Oaxaca City. Visit the cafes. The cafe culture there is really amazing. I mean, I just love to eat my way and drink my way through Oaxaca City. Another thing that I would recommend doing and I know some people have like some safety issues. I never had an issue here. There is a walk around the Galagetza Stadium. I want to map like how you enter but there's a beautiful long walkway. My hands look huge but there's a long walkway up into the stadium and then you kind of hike all around it and you can go up. I would say it's about an hour long. It's absolutely stunning and I would 100% recommend it. I've heard that the best time to go is early in the morning, not in the middle of the day. I guess some things, sketchy things happen. So just be careful. Don't carry valuable belongings with you. I would still recommend it because the views of the city are just incredible. There's also a mirador, a lookout, <laughs> that you can see Oaxaca City as well. And if you just want to do that, that's totally cool. The hike won't be as intense. I'd say it's for a moderate hiker. Beginner, you know, you can do it, but it's it's a hike. <laughs> so worth it and free. <laughs> Another thing you can do is cooking classes. They offer Oaxaca Oaxacan cooking classes all over the city. I'll leave some below that are local Oaxacan people that teach these classes. There's a ton of classes that you can take throughout Oaxaca City for the arts and the crafts and the cooking and the culinary experience. Oaxaca is like world known for its culinary cuisine. So there's a lot to learn and if you're passionate about cooking like I am, I would recommend taking a class to learn about it. There's a ton. Like I said, I'll leave some below and I'm also going to leave it all in a complete blog post. So it'll all be in one place written out for you. <laughs> Where to stay? Because we stayed there long term, we typically looked either on Airbnb or through Facebook. I think mostly we found through Airbnb. There are a few hotels there that are absolutely stunning. Prana, b and my friends stay there and they absolutely loved it. There's a few hostels as well. I can't really recommend like hotels yet. I hope to stay at more hotels in the future and I'll definitely keep you updated. There's tons of beautiful stunning hotels and Airbnbs. If you're looking for specific areas, some people have asked what areas should I look for in Oaxaca City. But my first two would be Halatlaco or Xochimilco. Halatlaco is my favorite, favorite neighborhood. It's a little bit outside of Centro and it is in the cobblestone street. Kind of like, uh, I don't know the word for it, but you just get this old feeling there and it's very artistic and colorful. And there's its own church there. There's a ton of little cafes and it's just like a nice homey feeling. I love going there at night 
and just experiencing the local culture there. It's one of my favorite areas. And then another one would be Xochimilco. It's a little bit more outside of the city, not that much, but you do have to cross the highway. Um, even, they do have a crosswalk and it actually enters into one of my most favorite parts of Oaxaca City. I'm just like thinking back to this beautiful place, but Xochimilco is beautiful, more quiet, and it's a little bit higher up, so you just have more stunning views, a bit more neighborhood -y. It's not as busy as Centro. You can stay in Centro as well, but it's going to be a little bit busier, a little bit noisier. Oaxaca can get noisy because of the music and uh, the liveliness of it, so just keep that in mind. I never had any issues, but that's just something to keep in mind. Another area that I stayed is by Galagasta Stadium. And I absolutely love that area as well. A little bit more local and a little higher up on the other side of town. The city is so walkable, which is something that I love about Oaxaca City is that you can literally just walk the entire city in one day. For the people who are looking for long-term stays, I would recommend checking out Facebook. There's a ton of Facebook groups that you can find long-term stays in Oaxaca. And then I also look on Airbnb and message the hosts and see if there's any off-app things for long-term stays. But there are a ton of Facebook community groups that you can join. If you're looking to get to a certain area of Mexico or anywhere, honestly, there's them all over the place. So look for expats in Oaxaca or renting in Oaxaca or you'll find the group groups and you can join them and then just post on them what you're looking for and someone will possibly reach out. Learn basic Spanish. Oaxaca is a place that, yeah, Spanish is their number one language along with the uh, indigenous language, but mostly people are going to speak to you in Spanish and they're not going to expect that you know English. Be respectful of the culture and the language. Try to learn basic Spanish before going to Oaxaca City. I would say it's the place where they speak the most Spanish that I've been so far. Don't drink the water from the tap. Make sure you drink filtered bottled water or most places will provide you with gallons of water that you can drink from. Another one, if you're coming from the US, you cannot flush toilet paper. Set that in mind, do not flush the toilet paper. This is anywhere pretty much in Latin America. Don't flush the toilet paper. Make sure that you put it in the trash because it can really clog their piping and mess up your place. There are festivals and celebrations everywhere. So it is a little bit noisier than most places. I don't mind it at all. Um, I mean, getting out of it, I realized how noisy it is, but uh, if you're there for a short period of time, enjoy it and be a part of it. Like there's just celebrations and festivals and music and liveliness everywhere you go. Places accept card, but I would say bring cash with you, um, especially if you're going to the markets. Mostly I pay with cash there. There are ATMs near Central mostly, so you're not going to have a problem with that. Carry cash with you. Earthquakes. There are earthquakes in Oaxaca. We experienced our first earthquake in Oaxaca City, so keep that in mind. There are earthquakes. They're usually minor. We just experienced one here in Puerto Escondido the other day, uh, like for one second. I was like, what was that? But earthquakes, educate yourself on what to do if there's an earthquake. I'm not trying to put it out there, but it does happen. Galagetza, that is something that I had no idea was a thing until we visited and lived in Oaxaca City during the time. It's a huge festival bringing together all the cultures of all the cultures of Oaxaca. It lasts for like a week or two weeks and it happens at the stadiums and then there's a lot of concerts in between that and it's just a really cool time where people from Mexico gather and join for this festival and that is in July or August depending and then there is Dia de Muertos. I didn't experience it yet. I hope to this year or potentially in the coming years. It is another big time in celebration in Oaxaca especially. Tipping at restaurants is something that you do. So I just want to remind you, you tip at restaurants. I typically leave about 15 to 20%. I think the average is about 10 to 15%. I need to tip at restaurants. 
water is limited in Oaxaca. We've had a few instances where the water tank ran out wherever we were staying and usually it gets filled up pretty fast. Conserve your water consumption when you're in Oaxaca City especially because water is very sacred and limited there especially in the drier months. Sometimes it doesn't get filled in time and it runs out quickly. Some places might be more on top of it than others but I did have some times where it ran out and then we just had to wait for someone to come and fill it up. It's normal and it's just a part of living there so just be conscious of the amount of water you are using. Days start slow in Oaxaca City especially. Things don't start to open up till 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning but it's also the perfect time for you to just go take a walk. Just take in the city before everyone else wakes up and it's just beautiful because everyone's just waking up slow. So Foods and cafes. There are just so many delicious restaurants and cafes in Oaxaca City. Oaxaca has some of the best coffee that grows in Oaxaca. So a lot of cafes have Oaxacan beans, local Oaxacan beans, and maybe Veracruz or Chiapas, but I really love Oaxaca coffee, so make sure you get to taste Oaxacan coffee. A few of my favorite cafes, and I will be doing a full cafe, my favorite cafes in Oaxaca, but make sure you go to Ono Lancheria, the best sandwiches, the best coffee, and like they're just the nicest people ever. Link is a nice like bakery and uh, they have good coffee. Yagoli is another good one. There's just so many delicious coffees and food so I will leave that in a blog post as well so stay tuned for that. The food is incredible so make sure to also enjoy the street food, the elotes, the esquites, the melas, but also like take yourself out on a nice fine dining experience because there's just beautiful food all over Oaxaca. How to get around. So like I said, Oaxaca City is so walkable that you're able to just walk around the entire city in 20 minutes. Usually I get around by foot, but there are also taxis. Very accessible, except when it's raining. It's a little more tricky. And then there's also Didi. Didi is like their Uber. Um, it's an app and you can order a taxi through that as well. And then the price is also set. So that's what you're paying. There's no like bargaining or getting ripped off or anything like that. Safety. I felt safe in Oaxaca City, safer than a lot of cities. Be careful, be cautious, don't flaunt your stuff. But I think the biggest thing is like pickpocketing, stealing phones if you're holding it like this. I've seen a few things of people like holding their phone like this while they're on the street and then someone comes by and grabs it out of their hand. So make sure not to do that and have something that you can hold your phone with like one of these or a strap. That's the most common thing I would say there what to pack for Oaxaca City. Oaxaca City, I would say it's a little bit more conservative. It's not as like showy as being at a beach or anything like that or in a city. For me, I definitely like to steer on the more conservative end and I wear a lot of long skirts, pants, and then like a tank top. Not super short shorts, but you know, like longer shorts. I rarely wear shorts though, if I'm being honest, but that's something that I would recommend. Typically just wear jeans, a tank top, or light linen pants, or linen skirts the Oaxacan skirts that I absolutely love. Tank tops because it is hot. I just, I never wear anything with sleeves really when I'm there because it's just a hot place. I get away with wearing pants. Sun protection is a must. It is very sunny there. So yeah, make sure to bring your SPF. I put sunscreen on every single day. If you are prone to getting sunburn, I would definitely make sure to bring sunscreen for everything because my friend went to Oaxaca for two days and she got extremely burnt just from doing the hike and Monte Albon because Monte Albon is up on a hill. The sun is just beaming at you. Either go in the morning or in the afternoon. Have an umbrella, whatever that is that you want. You go, you'll just kind of see the vibe on how others are dressing and make sure to bring a water bottle, of course, because yeah, it does get hot and you do want to make sure to stay hydrated and also reduce your waste. Most places will have gallons of water or filtered water for you to fill up your water bottle. I want to get into the coast and how to get to the coast from Oaxaca City. There are a few ways that you can go about this. Long and the easiest way would be to take a bus from Oaxaca City down to Puerto Escondido. You'll have to do the ADO bus or the OCC. It takes about 12 hours. It's an overnight bus. Um, I think you can do it in the day, but the most common way is overnight. You leave at night and then arrive in the morning. Very easy. We did it from Puerto Escondido to Oaxaca City. It's long, but 
you know, you sleep your way through it, just arrive in the morning, and then you have all day. So it's just like you're sleeping on the bus. It's very affordable as well. There's a few different options on like different types of buses that you can take. Another option going from Oaxaca City to San Jose del Pacifico, which is the mushroom town of Oaxaca of Mexico. And it's a beautiful little mountain town that you could spend a day or two at and it'll help break up your trip from Oaxaca City down to the coast. I absolutely loved this way because you'll take a like a collectivo. The names here of what they are, there's two services that you can use and you take them from Oaxaca City to San Jose and then from San Jose there are these little stands. There's two stands and you can choose what company you want to go with and that will take you down to Pachutla and then from Pachutla you're going to get uh, in a collectivo. It's from Delfinas and you can take that all the way down to Puerto Escondido to where you're staying. It's a fun, fun ride and it's really cool because you just kind of get to feel all the different climates as you're moving your way down the coast. Other way you can take a flight. Um, if you're coming straight to Puerto Escondido from wherever you are, you can take a flight. Usually you're going to have a layover in either Guadalajara or Mexico City. Even if you're trying to get from Oaxaca City to Puerto Escondido, you might have to stop in Mexico City, most likely, probably 100%. I know people who get like private things and then they come straight to Oaxaca City, but I don't know about that. I just saw one of my friends do that. They are building a long highway that is supposed to be a quicker way to get to the coast from Oaxaca City. It's a good and bad thing, but this has been going on for a really long time and I don't really know when it's going to be finished. San Jose del Pacifico is a beautiful place that I would suggest that you check out um, just to get some of the mountain crisp air and you can do a nice hike, you can do a Temescal, you can just uh, feel the energy in that special place and there's some really nice food and it just feels really nice secluded. Um, there's not a lot of people around. Mushroom season is between July to October. We stayed at Rancho Viejo, beautiful place as well and I'll put the vlog here, you can check it out. And if you're visiting coast, I would recommend obviously Puerto Escondido, that's where I am. I'm gonna work on a full guide of like the coast of Oaxaca, Puerto Escondido specifically because I've been living here now and I really really love it and I know a lot of people are interested in it and it's getting popular which is good and bad. <laughs> so when you're in uh, Puerto Escondido there's a few areas to check out um, that you can consider staying in. So there is Bococho or Rinconada and then there's Zicatella, Los Tamarindos and then La Punta. La Punta is definitely a little bit more like young and hip and party scene. Los Tamarindos is in between Zicatella and La Punta and you can experience just like a little bit more seclusion and quietness and then Zicatella is just like a beautiful like surf town. It just feels like more of an old surfy town. Rinconada is nice. There's a lot of great restaurants and beautiful beaches over there. There's a ton of amazing beaches. I'm going to work on a guide like that too or just sharing all the beaches here. So that will probably be in the Puerto Escondido vlog or video. So yeah, make sure to subscribe for that. But there are a bunch of beautiful beaches and Rinconada has some of the most famous beautiful beaches like Carizalillo is over there, Playa Coral. If you want to go deeper into the coast, um, Lazunte is a beautiful, more spiritual, more, I guess they call it hippie area. And a lot of people go there even from the lake and they go to Lazunte. It's kind of like two places that they go in San Cristobal. So it's a definitely more spiritual, more relaxed vibe. Um, the internet isn't great there, but it's just beautiful. And it's a nice getaway from the busyness of Puerto Escondido. And Zipolite is Mexico's only nudist beach. And it's one of my favorite areas and one of my favorite places in Mexico so far. I absolutely love Zipolite. It's a small little town and delicious food and bakeries and it's just so quaint and quiet and aside from the nudist stuff which I don't mind it at all. Um, I actually think it's really nice and feels free there. It's just a beautiful place so I would definitely recommend going there. A few other places are Porto Angelito, Playa Angelito, and then Baltuco is another one. I haven't been there yet. I would definitely recommend squeezing in some time to get to the coast of Oaxaca. It's so beautiful. The sunsets here are unreal and you're able to just like really get a nice like relaxation and feel a different beach vibe and energy than let's say like 
Puerto Vallarta or Cancun or Tulum. It's a place where we came for four days and we were like, we're going to move here. And so we moved here months later and uh, yeah, it's a really, really special place and there's delicious food and a lot of things to do, but also nothing to do. And so it's great in that way. I think that's it. If you guys have any other questions, definitely let me know. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, if you'd like to follow me for more Oaxaca, Mexico, and just travel content, make sure to subscribe, like, comment. Um, and yeah, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is olivia.annalise. But yeah, I hope you guys have a beautiful day and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.